a hands-on look at what's new in iOS 18.1 Developer Beta 6. All kinds of new toggles, TikTok sharing for Apple Music, and much more. Check it out. How's it going folks, Jeff Benjamin with 9to5Mac. So this is iOS 18.1 Beta 6, and it comes with build number 22B5069A. And that's indicative that we will see an RC build coming very soon. It's likely that the next beta release is the release candidate for 18.1. If you're an AirPods Pro user, you'll appreciate the loud sound reduction feature. And this basically reduces your exposure to loud sounds when using one of the noise control modes on the AirPods. So if you just have the noise control off, you're not gonna get loud sound reduction Include it, but if you're using one of these transparency, adaptive, or noise cancellation, it will include loud sound reduction. If you scroll down here, you're going to see within the settings the loud sound reduction toggle, which reduces loud sounds that you're exposed to. So if something like really loud goes by, I'm thinking like a really loud siren or lawnmower or something like that that could potentially damage your hearing. This is aimed to protect you from that. Now, speaking of AirPods, I just dropped my AirPods for review. If you haven't checked that out, be sure to check it out here. Beta 6 also includes a new splash screen for Apple intelligence and mail. So it highlights things like priority messages, the summarize feature for messages and smart replies, none of which are new for beta users, but this new splash screen highlights all the new features. Speaking of splash screens, there's also a new App Store splash screen highlighting the more powerful search, which includes natural language and descriptive app tags to help you find what you're looking for. And in beta six, when searching in settings, you'll see this Ask Siri How panel, basically highlighting how you can get step-by-step -step instructions for, from Siri to show you how to use iOS. So if I invoke Siri and I say, hey, how do I turn on Wi-Fi? It'll tell me just like that. So basically just highlighting this new Siri functionality within the settings search. Now there's a redesigned dual line button in the phone app. You probably can see it right here. It's that P in the upper left hand corner. It's kind of weird, definitely stands out, kind of sticks out like a sore thumb, but basically you can switch between that P by the way, stands for primary. That's my primary line. I have two lines on this phone, two eSIMs. So basically if I tap the P, I could switch between the primary and the business line, just like we could before, but now you have the new icon in the upper left hand corner to do that. So I switch to business and it changes to a B. And when I switch back to primary, it changes to a P. I didn't know I had flows like that, did you? I didn't think so. There's also updated news and Safari icons when using tint. So if you go in to customize, go to tint, change up the tint color to make something really that really pops out. And now with news, you could see on the outside border, it used to just be black, but now you have that portion is tinted as well. And for Safari, you're gonna notice that the inside of that circle of the Safari logo is now tinted as well. Previously, it wasn't. Now you also have TikTok sharing from Apple Music. So if you go and share a song here, assuming that uh, copyright allows for it, you can go ahead and share that via an image or a message or a video. And there's an updated Apple Intelligence glyph in the Notes app. So it looks similar, but now you see the little pin icon as well and just tapping that will invoke your writing tools to proofread or rewrite, et cetera. And you also get batch counters in the notification center, not just for the app notifications that are summarized with Apple Intelligence. We've seen that before, but now the batch counters come to all notifications that have multiple notifications within the stack. And that's super handy. There's also new measure and level toggles in control center. I'm kind of spoiling another feature, but that's okay. All right, so measure and level. So we have both of those there. So those individual toggles, you can just tap on them and that will open up the respective aspects of the measure app. So here you have just the measure tool. And then I do the same thing here and I have the level tool just like that. What's cool, of course, now you can assign that directly to the action button and I can open up measure just like that, which is kind of cool. There's also satellite and airdrop connectivity toggles that are individual toggles now. So here, connectivity continues to gain more and more individual toggles, which so is nice. So let's go ahead and add both of those to our control center here. So we'll add satellite there and add airdrop. Here we go. So we have both of those added. 
Now, if I tap satellite, it's just gonna ask me to do a demo of the satellite. So we're not gonna do that. But AirDrop does give you, of course, the options to enable everyone or turn receiving off. And if you're an iPhone 16 Pro user, you no doubt have been using the camera control button. And one thing you'll notice in iOS 18.1 beta 6 is that if you switch over to the tone setting, we'll just do that. You're gonna notice that the scale is a little bit different. Instead of negative one to one, the scale now ranges from negative 100 to 100. But those num numbers appear to correlate directly to the old scale as well. So you're not gonna notice a difference in the actual tone. And in the 18.1 beta fork, you can enable sleep apnea notifications in health. So we'll go ahead and go through and set that up. You're gonna see a setup button at the top. You just tap that to get set up for sleep apnea notifications on your Apple Watch. So you can receive a notification. If your watch detects signs of sleep apnea, it's gonna ask you to answer a couple of questions. Are you 18 or older? Have you been diagnosed? The next. And then it's gonna tell you how it works. So Apple Watch tracks your breathing while you're sleeping and records any disturbances, etc. And then you just go through, set up those notifications, and it'll take a few nightly sleep measurements to actually identify whether you're suffering from sleep apnea. So ladies and gentlemen, that has been a look at iOS 18.1, developer beta 6. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments section. And if you appreciated this video, be sure to check out these.